this lecture, we'll talk about financial statement analysis, and we'll talk about this specifically the cash management aspects of it. Asset utilization ratios measure how well a firm uses the assets that it has, like the cash or the inventories, those kinds of things. Um, how well they do it to generate, uh, for every dollar of revenue earned, comparing that with how well they manage their assets. Obviously, companies using their assets more productively will have higher returns on assets than their less efficient competitors. Similarly, managers can use asset utilization ratios to pinpoint areas of inefficiency in their operations. These ratios, examples include receivables turnover, inventory turnover, and um, total asset turnover, uh, relate balance sheet assets to sales, which are found on the income statement. So let's look first at receivables turnover. Uh, sales divided by accounts receivable indicates how many times a firm collects its accounts receivable in one year. It also demonstrates how quickly a firm is able to collect payments on its credit sales. Obviously, no payments means no profits. Microsoft, for example, collected its receivables 4.45 times per year, which translates to about 80 days. So sometimes they call this days outstanding on the receivables. This is, the most, this is most likely due to the trade terms they give their corporate customers. Corporate customers probably pay net 90 or something. So people tend not to pay their bills until they're due. Um, receivables turnover equals sales, that's total net revenues, divided by receivables. So Microsoft sales of $77.8 billion, $77 billion is divided by their receivables, which is $17.4 billion. Uh, so that gives you receivables turnover of 4.45 times, which is what we were describing before. That's roughly 80 days um, out, stays outstanding. So that's a way to think about it. And we have inventory turnover. This is sales divided by total inventory. This indicates how many times a firm sells and replaces its inventory over the course of a year. A high inventory turnover ratio may indicate great efficiency, but may also suggest the possibility of lost sales due to stockouts or insufficient stock levels. If you turn over too many times, that may mean customers are trying to buy, but there's nothing on the shelves. Microsoft's inventory turnover indicates it replaces its inventory 40.17 times per year, or about every nine days. Inventory turnover is calculated as total net revenues divided by inventory. In Microsoft's case, that's 77.8 billion in sales divided by 1.9 billion in inventory, or 40.17 times. So you get the feeling of how these turn. Total asset turnover is sales or total revenue divided by assets or total assets. And this measures how well an organization uses all of its assets in creating sales. It indicates whether a company is using its assets productively. Microsoft generated in the end $0.55 in sales, 55 cents for every dollar of its total corporate assets. Total asset turnover is equal to sales, that's total net revenue, divided by total assets. So in Microsoft's case, we had $77.8 billion in sales divided by $142 billion in total assets, or 0.55 times. That's, that, is, that equals 0.55 uh, or 55 cents for every dollar in sales. So let's turn to a couple other of these uh, kind of uh, cash management or uh, uh, asset management measures. Liquidity ratios compare current, which is their short-term assets, to current or short-term liabilities. This indicates the speed with which a company can turn its assets um, into cash as a, as a, to meet its debt obligations if they come due. High liquidity ratios may satisfy a creditor's need for safety, but ratios that are too high may indicate that the organization is not using its current assets efficiently. Liquidity ratios are generally best examined in conjunction with asset utilization ratios because high turnover ratios imply that cash is flowing through an organization very quickly. 
a situation that dramatically reduces the need for the type of reserves that are measured by the liquidity ratio. If you have lots of cash flowing through the company quickly and all the time, you don't necessarily need to have cash reserves. The first of these is current ratio. This is calculated by dividing current assets by current liabilities. Microsoft, Microsoft's current ratio indicates that for every dollar of current liabilities, the firm has $2.71 of current assets on hand. Microsoft's current assets are 101 billion divided by its current liabilities, which is 37 billion. That gives you 2.71 times. They have 2.71 times as much as many assets as they have liabilities. Also important is like a, it's called the quick ratio because it's ready assets, ready assets that are ready to become liquid. Uh, this is known as the acid test, the quick ratio. It's a far more stringent measure of liquidity because it eliminates inventory, which you don't necessarily get dollar for dollar if you had to liquidate. It's the least liquid current assets. This measures how well an organization can meet its current obligations without resorting to selling off its inventory. Microsoft had 2.66 million, or excuse me, 2.66 dollars invested in current assets that is subtracting on inventory for every $1 of current liabilities. So Microsoft's quick ratio takes their current assets, less inventory of 99.5 billion and divides it by its current liabilities of 37.4 billion to give you a quick ratio of 2.66. Uh, these are very, these are strong ratios. We'll continue looking at the uh, more of these, uh, these uh, this financial analysis, thinking more about the capital markets the longer term assets um, in the next lecture, lecture 10.